Hello D class, as you can tell I'm here with my lovely friends of the SCP crew and here I'm going to tell you and them something interesting. If you go to the CDC and ask very nicely, they'll give you a sample of the bubonic plague. You don't- you wouldn't have to go to the CDC for that. It's- it's still a living bacterial infection. You could probably go to most, like, disease banks and get it. I assume most disease banks wouldn't hand you that. <laughs> I mean, true, yeah, you're not going even to get handed it. Is, but... Even if there's a modern cure, the modern cure hasn't been used in so long that they generally aren't kept in stock anymore. The modern cure is antibiotics. It, huh. It's a bacterial infection. That is true, but it used to have something more exact. But oh yeah, I'll admit that does kind of take care of everything relating to bacteria for the most part. I'm gonna crush this fucking Lego shark. I mean, fuck dragon. God damn it, bright. <laughs> oh my god, this this dragon is just a fucking sauropod with wings. I need him. Anyway, we ready to hear the first SCP of the night, which is the picture from the co that I sent yesterday. Oh, as a side note, I just made sauropods extinct again. Good job. <laughs> and I guess we're ready. Maybe. All right. SCP-1647. Also known as Log of Extra Scholastic Events. Description SCP 1647 is an anomalous phenomenon affecting high school teachers in the southern United States. Subjects affected by SCP 1647 display erratic and illogical behaviors, showing no apparent awareness nor concern for themselves and others. Affected individuals often perform nonsensical and random actions, such as attempting to climb the nearest building, undress, or play catch with the school's furniture. Often, uh, s several severely injuring themselves and or other faculty members. At time of writing, no student has ever been harmed by the affected teachers. Affected individuals will continue to display their anomalous behaviors for four uh, for five hours, the subjects claim to be aware of their actions, but are not able to reason during this condition. SCP-1647 seems to mostly occur during classworks and important scholastic events. SCP-1647 has never occurred during school trips. The first confirmed instance of SCP-1647 occurred on Redacted in the Redacted High School, Louisiana, where it was initially identified as a single extranormal event, designated as EXE-3562. The following is the original report regarding EXE-3562. Event Description Every teacher of the Redacted High School simultaneously displayed abnormal behaviors during and after a standardized math test for exactly five hours. Students and other faculty members support various t teachers licking blackboards and, and the physical e education teacher throwing a urinal from the building's roof, resulting in the injury of redacted faculty members. Date of occurrence, redacted. Location, Redacted High School, Redacted, Louisiana. Follow-up actions taken, local media suppressed, injured individuals treated on site, Class B amnestics administered to students and faculty members, cover-up story regarding vandalism enacted. Following this event, SCP-1647 has occurred for redacted times. SCP-1647 has been classified Keter as of redacted.
Yeah, there you go. It uh, seems like one of those that is, like, mostly uh, filled out by addendums. Yeah, I kind of want to hear at least one addendum. Uh, there's a couple. All right. Addendum 1647-1. Incident 1647-alpha. On redacted, an SP-1647 event occurred in the redacted high school in redacted Kentucky. After the containment of affected individuals and in administration of an S6, Foundation agents found a small luminescent sphere suspended three meters from the ground within the school's boiler room. The item was later identified as a source of SCP-1647, and they referred to as SCP-1647-A. Why it has never been found in other areas under SCP-1647's effect is unknown. SCP-1647-A was transported to Site-15 where it underwent an operation of reverse engineering. SCP-1647-A was proved to be entirely composed of metal and its inner workings being similar to trans transistor-based devices. During the operation, SCP-1647-A autonomously activated causing Professor Redacted and Redacted, respectively former professors of mathematics and physics to display behavior similar to SCP-1647's affected. Professor Redacted and Redacted were successfully re restrained by on-site security personnel, both recovered five hours later. SCP-1647-A's mechanism was successfully removed and subsequently contained. Following a period of inactivity for seven months, SCP-1647 was reclassified as neutralized. The redacted. Addendum 1647-2. Incident 1647-Beta. On, on redacted, Three months after its reclassification to neutralize, abnormal behaviors of multiple teachers were reported from the redacted high school in redacted Arkansas, identifying as an SCP-1647's occurrence. Affected individuals do, did not limit themselves to nonsensical behaviors, but directly injured or killed other faculty members, including other teachers, while no student was harmed. Upon arrival of Foundation agents, affected individuals ceased all other activities and engaged in contact with them. Six individuals were terminated on site, while others were contained. Passive monastics were administered to all present. All deaths were stated to have been caused by fatal car accidents. Sorry. Ugh. Ugh, why are you yawning so much? Alright, uh, caused by a fatal car accident. An instance of SCP-1647-A was found inside the, the thoracic cavity of Mr. Redacted, an English literature professor, and was immediately neutralized upon extraction. The instance was introduced in Mr. Redacted's body via surgery as proven by the numerous scars found on his body. Addendum 1647-3 Document 1647-17-GI Following type typewritten note was also found inside Mr. Redax's thoracic cavity. The source of the letter is currently unknown. We are students. Our school system is shit. Teachers do not fucking care about us. They treat us like machines. They always laugh when they when we screw up. They always act like buffoons. We will no longer tolerate this. Hundreds of students will commit auto homicide. Because school is too hard and the teachers do not care. But now it is our turn to laugh at them. Two Solanos were then found within other instances 
instances of SCP 647 A from other hmm. SCP 1647 events. A foundation currently contains only 10 instances of SCP 1647 A, despite it having occurred over redacted times at time of writing. Addendum 1647-4 notes on SCP-1647's current status. SCP-1647 no longer manifests with it, with its previously stated pattern. SCP-1647 events now occur randomly, varying from 3 to 54 times a year. However, with their actions are invariably dangerous, affected individuals have not directly harmed others a second time with the exception of Foundation personnel. SCP-1647 has been reclassified as Keter as of Redacted. And there you go. Okay, so am I getting this right when I... Uh, like, is this just, like, only affecting a specific school? Uh, no, it's affecting... It's happened in multiple states, so... Oh, okay. Ooh. So yeah, it's it's move it moves around. What to do with that? Uh I, I think it'd still just be certain groups. Because like even though it moves around, which makes the Keter classification understandable. Um it's still only affecting uh like people in the general vicinity of these schools. Yeah. Like the this isn't going to cause a complete collapse of society. Yeah. Unlike the others that we have up above. <laughs> and it's not gonna cause the complete destruction of a state like Kudzu. Yeah. No, before we something yeah before, that's a question that's that's a question is kudzu an scp we already did that one well yeah but it was a different like it, it was like a special kudzu right i'm asking just standard everyday kudzu is Probably that an not. scp anyway it's not an scp but it should be it's just we understand it that doesn't make it any easier but we understand it so, uh, when I was looking up a picture for the next SCP, this is what popped up for it. Just to prepare yourselves. Oh. This is stream planning. So, based upon this... What? What am I looking at? I don't know. <laughs> what? Okay. It looks like you... a conspiracy. It's, what? Why it's the you... next SCP. Why would you say prepare SCP... yourselves if you don't understand it? I haven't read the SCP before, so how would I know? Well, yeah, but why'd you say prepare yourselves? As if, like, like you know that something terrible is about to happen. Don't worry about it. Alright. All right, next SCP is SCP-1659, also known as uh, Directorate K. Right. By the way, Jerry, we're hearing background noise. I'll, I'll mute myself. Spook oh. just listening to some stuff. All right. Oh, shit, this... Oh, God damn it! Not again! Why with the why with the Greek letters? No. <laughs> Just explain the things, but use one, two, three instead of the Greek if it helps. Okay. Yeah. 
Alright. But apparently this one's a long description, so we may not have to read addendums. If there are any. Alright. SCP-1659 is a, is a quasi-governmental organization transiting all known political boundaries and divisions. This organization is made up of at least 315,449 individuals who possesses the inherent sense that they are a part of a large governing organization known to its members as Directorate K. Individuals affected by SCP-1559 demonstrate knowledge not only of the existence of, the, of this organization, but which specific subunit they belong to and a detailed sense of their duties to be carried out, out as a part of SCP-1659. Interviews with affected subjects suggest that, that this knowledge is spontaneously obtained through unknown means, usually between the ages of 17 and 32. Once a subject is affected by SCP-1659, no known means are effective in eliminating knowledge of direct, Directorate K, short of systemic neurological damage or death. Individuals from throughout the world appear to be affected by SCP-1659 at random. The organizational structure of SCP-1659 is highly complex and appears to have no overarching goal or purpose. Subunits within SCP-1659 are given titles and the sensible missions, how, however, they, the work performed by members of, the, of a designated subunit often has no discernible connection with the unit's stated purpose. Foundation researchers, researchers have documented 1,297 subunits to date, apart from Direct Torque K, serving as the central administering entity. The relationships of these subunits to one another is currently impossible to determine. Hierarchies appear to change regularly, and reorganizations of these units happen frequently. Individuals affected by SCP-6059 frequently spend significant amounts of time at seemingly pointless tasks. Documented examples include a retired electrician identifying himself as a technician attached to the Office of Slime Mold Protection, repeatedly spinning a coin on the ground at a crowded bus stop in Toronto, Canada. Three individuals claiming to work for the Anui Control Bureau traveling throughout rural southwestern Slovakia, counting any observed instances of East Cardenius. Valnaris, also known as the common Dormouse, and text messaging the results to a phone number listed as the Japanese Embassy in Lima, Peru. A 15th final division work crew in a privately owned truck traveling to traffic intersections in various towns in the south. Gansan Province, South Korea, cleaning signs related to pedestrian safety. Redacted, Police Chief of Redacted, Bolivia, and confirmed SCP-1659 subject continually building in his backyard a crude antenna structure 4 meters in height out of tinfoil disassembling it and reassembling it. A self-described official meeting of the People's Gov Governing War of Gal Bladder Health, consisting of a spontaneous gathering of 28 individuals in a remote region of the Mojave Desert in California, United States, culminating in any detonation of an explosive device estimated to be equivalent to 500 kilograms of TNT. Individuals affected by SCP-1659 are not compelled in any discernible manner to perform their assigned duties, however, subjects are almost always highly motivated to carry out tasks assigned by SCP-1659 and affected individuals 
display behavioral traits and attitudes commonly associated with organizations displaying high trap levels of morale and team cohesion. While observed in activity of SCB-1659 subjects at the individual level appears to have no logical purpose, Broader contextual analysis has revealed that SCP-1659 exhibits a profound ability to affect world commodities, market fluctuations, cultural trends, real estate development, movement of refugee populations, and, to a limited extent, deployment of military assets. SCP-1659 is believed to achieve this through a a combination of the sum total of the tasks its subjects carry out, its ownership stake in a collection of strategic private, for, private firms, and its placement of subjects in posts at all levels of government. In most cases, influence exercised by SCP-1659 is subtle and does not de deviate significantly from general societal ex expectations. Though it, this is theorized to be partially attributed to SCP-1659's agreement to abide by the Nine Mile Station Protocol, an exception appears to be trends in fine dining and col culinary technology, upon which SCP-1659 has exercised profound effects. Many world-renowned restaurants are either owned or financed by SCP-1659, including Redacted in Paris, France, Redacted in Osaka, Japan, and Redacted in Catalonia, Spain. Subjects affected by SCP-1659 are present throughout the world and generally fall into three observed categories. SCP-1659-1 These individuals occupy leadership positions within SCP-1659 Analogous to agency directors, minor political leaders, and other high-ranking officials. Currently, 2% of the SCP-1659 are classified in this manner. Members of the Directorate K itself believed to be central authority of SCP-1659 as part of, the, of this group and are believed to number between 100 and 120 individuals at present. SCP-1659-2, an estimated 15% of SCP-1659 instances belong to this class. These individuals tend to be tasked with duties re reassembling those of mid-level official and are usually supervisory or quasi-independent in nature. Many individuals in this group hold positions of authority and establish governments at all levels throughout the world. Redacted formal Prime Minister of Gambia for being removed by Foundation operatives in the wake of incident SCP-1659-A, uh, an incident 1659 Mike is believed to ha have been one of the, these individuals. SCP-1659-3, the vast majority of SCP-1659 fall under the classification. These individuals perform tasks associated with the various subunits of SCP-1659 and are thus the most likely to come to the attention of, of the Foundation assets, while SCP-1659-3 instances are drawn from a wide er array of sources. A high proportion of these individuals are trans- Seeing inmates at penal or mental health institutions or other that trench traditionally live outside mainstream society. And there you go. That's the SCP. Okay, so for starters, because I've been fixating on it, 
earlier in this. It sounded like you said the name of a desert, I think, in the United States, right? Uh, let me go back and look. Let's see. Let's see, Toronto, Canada. Uh, Slovakia. Let's see, and... Uh, Bolivia. Bolivia. Uh oh yeah, Mojave Desert in California. How is it spelled? Uh M O J A V E. That would be the Mojave Desert. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard of that desert, so uh Sorry, my brain was fixating on that the entire time after you said it. Uh, uh, in terms of this thing's threat level, honestly, it doesn't sound like it's that dangerous. Besides the whole um, having a hand in political affairs. And in that case, like, if it's just, for the most part, trying to avoid doing anything super big, I don't, I, I don't know if it's that much of a threat. It's just the Illuminati. I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> um... Trying to think, didn't we have a classification that's like world changing? Yeah, world changing. We added that because we have two in there. Yeah, I think that might be a good place for this because, like, they have a big hand in political matters. They could probably affect the world massively, but the main thing they seem concerned about is, uh, food restaurant, <laughs> fucking restaurants. Yeah. Should probably be glad they're not uh, thinking about anything bigger at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Like, let's just just let them stick to their restaurants. I'm fine with that. I, I just find that kind of amusing. They have all this power. And the only thing they actually do with the power is make really nice restaurants. Okay, yeah. hey, just to be fair, there's quite a few mafias that also like making restaurants. Well, yeah, but they, they're doing other things with their power other than just making restaurants. Yeah. Well, yes, but they make very nice restaurants. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, but this 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 group only makes restaurants. They have all this political power, and they only make restaurants. That's yeah. fair. So, I think I know what I'm going to do from now on. Mm -hmm. uh, that while I'm re uh, before I read it, I post a picture of the SCP that we're going to be talk talking about. That way you can get a mental picture of what it is okay. while, we're while I'm reading it. That um makes sense. To me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh its nickname does not match the picture, but that is the picture of the SCP. <laughs> SCP sixteen eighty one, also known as American Idols. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, that doesn't look <laughs> Did I hear you right? Yeah, its nickname is American Idols. Um. Right. I think that's an image that you could probably put a spoiler on. Okay, I'll fix that. I mean, I doubt it would cause any issues, but I imagine there, it could be triggering for someone to just randomly... Look into stream planning and see. Oh, wait, 
there's like a group of men jumping off of a building. Alright, this one is shorter than the other one. <laughs> mm. Oh god damn it, the GOC is involved with this. Well, I mean, I would just... Great. I mean, I would assume it's shorter, considering the fact that those guys are doing something that's making their lives much shorter. Every time I see GOCs and, like, the description of an SCP, I always imagine something went wrong. I mean, the the whole uh, chair incident doesn't really inspire confidence. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, if anyone can traumatize anything, the GOC can. I shouldn't say that, especially after the chair. I think it's the only time I've ever read about a traumatized chair. Yeah, mm. motherfucker, motherfuckers woke up one day and said, I'm going to traumatize a chair. <laughs> they gave they gave PTSD to an object that just wanted to be loved and useful. They come to think of it, just sit on them. Come to think of it, assuming that uh, I think it's Proposition One Twenty something here in Colorado. Assuming that that gets through, and we have approved psychedelics for helping PTSD. Does that mean we could give the chair psychedelics to help them? <laughs> oh my God. Maybe if they were still a chair, but at the moment, uh, I think they're in too many pieces. Just, they might, just, they might uh, mistake it for an attack on their person and kill the, the person trying to give it to them. No, 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 no. Here's the plan. Like, we're using them as mulch right now, right? Yes. Plant the psychedelic mushrooms in the mulch. Oh, <laughs> see what happens. See if that helps them in any way. <laughs> you know, it might help them feel better. After all, if those are used to help other people, that'll make the chair feel a lot better. The because all becomes... it wants to do is help people feel better. Yeah. I well, mean, yeah. At the very least, he could be a valuable source of uh, the the foundation getting access to psychedelics for. I don't know. I assume they have to deal with PTSD having people here and there. I don't know. It's just... a CP foundation. Well, then again, yeah. they have a nestic, so they probably wouldn't need standard medications. Anyway, I don't That's know. Fair. I don't know why, but when Hatchet when you said to plant plant side de psychedelics, uh, on the mulch, I started thinking that the mulch starts turning into rainbow colors because of the psychedelics. It's not. That's not how that works. I right. know it doesn't. I, I don't know why my brain really thought that. I will say using a uh, normal mushrooms would be safer than where the SCP gets its typical amnestics. That's true. And also, come to think of it, like maybe I don't know as much about amnestics as like a sci-fi thing, but. I feel like they wouldn't go all the way in dealing with PTSD. Because, like, if all they do is get rid of memories, okay, but with PTSD, like, well, there's an actual way of Trust me, it gets rid of everything. Actually, yeah, Does Hatchet, it? there, there is... I, I forgot what it is. It's, like, the really the strongest form of an amnestic that literally wipes everything. The PTSD, the memory, even... Them even, uh, in everything. It just wipes out everything of that entire event. PTSD, memory, everything. Oh, okay. You don't even remember who your mom is. Yeah, it, it's it's a heavy hitting amnestic. They rarely ever use it. I see. I don't think it came from 3000, though. I think it came from something else that was far stronger. Uh, I could, I have no idea. It could be from something else, but 3000's amnestics are still powerful. The issue is, if you give too potent of a punch on 3000's, instead of continuing to get rid of them, they'll give you memories that aren't yours. Yeah. And then you'll start thinking you're someone else, and then you'll start wanting to enter 3000's body, 
while still being alive. So you'll be eaten alive and in horrible, in a horrible state of mindlessness. That's an interesting uh, hunting technique. <laughs> so yeah, Hatch, there, there is an amnestic that can get rid of PTSD. Okay. But it's like not recommended because it's but, heavy hitting. But what that also means is that they wouldn't be using that as the main treatment for PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, I think that I think that the psychedelic mushrooms could still have a benefit to the foundation. Yeah. I agree. Anyway, the psychedelics just... are safer than both versions of amnestics that we have spoken about here. As as such, we need to implore the the foundation to see if we can treat the chair's PTSD by planting psychedelics in it. Oh yes, although I think uh, if they did that, they would need to still keep the flowers because the flowers help it feel pretty and useful. Well, yeah. Wait, I wonder... okay. Get really pretty mushrooms like <laughs> fly amanita. Anyway, before I go on to the SCP, I think, I think I may have remembered how that amnestic was created. It's when they combine three thousands with nine three nines amnestic stuff. Oh, that sounds magically horrifying! I forget what nine three nine is. That with many voices. Uh, the doggos. <laughs> that helps you. <laughs> Yeah, I know that dog owns. <laughs> I should remember that by now, but I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. And we get to find out but, how the GOC fucked up. <laughs> but what if I want to keep talking about the ramifications of using psychedelics on the chair? No. Anyway. Wait, we've already spoke a lot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. But what if I want to keep speaking? Shut up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> On with the talk with amnestics and memetic agents. Let's oh, see boy. if the oh, DLC for... gave something else PTSD or did something horrible again. Maybe. Uh, I think those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. That's, that's valid. Anyway. Uh. SCP-1681 is an auditory memetic agent exclusively affecting human beings. SCP-1681 is spread specifically throughout, throughout public gatherings attended by uh, over 1,000 individuals in countries belonging to the former USSR and is capable of spontaneous outbreaks despite joint fe foundation and global co coalition efforts to eradicate it outside of containment. Documentation seized from GRU Division P archives after is still dissolution shows that SCP-1681 was developed by that organization in an effort to influence and control public opinion on the United States. SCP-1681 was first deployed on October 21st, 1982, and far exceeded projected infectivity and auditory memetic countermeasures to SCP-1681 is mentioned in the documentation that does not appear to be effective. It is unknown whether this is because of the flawed design or due to SCP-1681 evolving. SCP-1681 takes the form of a phrase, After all, when actors lead nations, bears will roar. Appended to the end of the anecdote told by individuals, an alpha stage of affection. These anecdotes, anecdotes uh, themselves are not anomalous and do not show a pattern to their subject matter, regardless of their con content. Hosts' anecdotes eventually begin to lose coherency, incorporating references to the United States and corresponding symbolism before terminating in S. SCP-1681. Exposure to SCP-1681 always results in an alpha stage infection. Listeners are, are fully aware of this coordinates of in SCP-1681-1 speech, but attempts to point it out to them results 
in SCP-1681-1 becoming confused and briefly distracted before trying to return to their story. An approximate 48% of SCP-1681-1 move on to the beta stage of infection, while the remainder stay in alpha stage indefinitely spreading SCP-1681. Alpha stage SCP-1681-1 specimens will attend any eligible event to spread SCP-1681, disregarding relative financial expense, travel distance, or prior commitments. Those SCP-1681-1 transiting to beta stage infection will, will withdraw from society, severing all ties to family, loved ones, and associates. During this time, SCP-1681-1 will lapse into prolonged catatonic states, interspersed with brief periods of lucidity. Communication has proven difficult with attempts at conversations derailed by bouts of euphoric hysteria. Specimens in this transverse trans trans fuck. Oh, I'm doing that. Trans transitory stage appear to suffer from mixed aphigia despite this onset of starvation does not occur. It, the trans this trans transitory stage lasts for approximately three to six days, after which SCP-1681-1 will have fully progressed into beta stage. It will then attempt to gain access to the roof of the nearest high or rise building and throw itself off. On impact, a, a beeline or event is initiated. The specimens detained before progressing fully into beta stage will exhibit increase, increasingly restless behavior until a Berliner event spontaneously occurs. In a Berliner effect event, an SCP-1681-1 specimen splits into multiple instances of a specific object or animal, which disperse at speeds up to 500 meters per second. The mass and volume of material dispersed does not correspond to that of of the SCP-1681-1 instance triggering the B-liner event. And no traces of SCP-1681-1 are recovered post-event. Material produced during B-liner events does not exhibit anomalous properties. However, the high kinetic energy of such projectiles and occasional presence of mundane contaminants may pose a significant hazard to the public at large. And there you go. Really confused on that last bit. Like what's what 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 happens after they jump? Uh they in a Berliner event, SCB-1681-1 specimens split into multiple instances of a specific object or animal, which disperse at speeds up to 500 meters per second. They basically break into multiple living beings. That's uh, this. Uh, I'll assume that this is just the result of some uh, arm of the USSR trying to make propaganda and just ha having a rough time of it yeah uh how the fuck again how the fuck do we classify this it spreads fast it yeah. spreads far i feel like the only way to avoid it is not going to parties <laughs> i got that covered <laughs> that and the fact that I'm not in an ex-Soviet Union state. Fair. That's too. fair. So, so, yeah, basically, this is Soviet propaganda that makes, that, that, that comes in the form of a weird phrase, uh, 
and eventually makes the person hate the United States so much that they try to off themselves. But instead of actually succeeding in doing that, they split into random in, into a random animal. Are okay. you okay? Maybe. I'm just very confused. Or like I'm I'm just like trying to think like what like so how many did it say like it's not everyone ends up doing that? It's in fact forty eight percent. Forty oh that's still a very worryingly high percent. Uh, again, like I feel I feel like we need an in between between city and certain groups. Because this is like a really large amount of people, but I don't see this destroying a city. It's just going to cause a lot of individuals throughout these countries to turn into random animals. I feel like at the this point, they would no longer be those individuals anymore. What what do you mean? Well, at some point when you're infected enough, how much is really your thoughts and how much is the infection's thoughts? Oh yeah, but didn't it say that like most infections are basically just like like it's literally kind of like the same thing as a uh um incubation period mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not, not talking about that. those i'm talking about everyone who goes past that well yeah but like those individuals like that's what i'm talking about those individuals are like uh -huh. the only ones severely and noticeably affected by it but i mean it's still a very significant number of people oh, but yeah. it's not like going to cause the collapse of a city or a nation so like what what the what the fuck do we do with this uh, i guess i guess you could say that like it's it's it can easily cause like the death of a city's worth of people could put it like that and justify putting it in say I think I'll just go with that. It's just put it in city. Yeah, it makes sense. It's kinda of hard to place it. Yeah, it's it's like one of those really weird ones. All right, everyone, you ready for the next SCP picture though? Yeah, and like I would, like that's the thing. My first inclination when we hit one of those weird ones is put it in world changing, but I don't know. I feel like this doesn't reach that grandiose. Why is there just a random ass country house on my screen? That's the next SCP. <laughs> okay. Well, then either way, let's continue. Yeah. All right, next SCP is SCP-1684, also known as Viral Reality. All right. SCP-1684 is a phenomenon Affecting homes being sold by Earth Home Re Reality Corporation. Earth Home Reality is a real estate firm based in San Francisco, California, and founded in 1995. Once a civilian successfully purchases a home affected by SCP-1684, anomalous properties will manifest within 30 days. At this point, the subject, will, along with their personal possessions and furniture, will spontaneously vanish from the home. Monitoring systems observing, observing this process reveal that, that it is instantaneous. 
The home will then revert to to its pre-sale condition. At this point, the home will be returned on the scale. Of, all right, hold on. At this point, the home will be returned to sale on the open market under Perth Home Real Realty. In addition, if the house house previously occupied by the subject has yet to be sold, its sale will be transferred to Perth Home R Reality as well. Legal paperwork automatically adjusts for these conditions to occur. Homes sold by Hearth Home Real Real Realty are sold for much lower commissions than competitive real estate firms. Although these prices are not paranormally low, they are often deciding. God damn it. Uh, there's no often the signing factor for additional subjects to buy SCP-1684 affected houses. There you go, guys. That's that's it. It's just a ha houses that eat people, apparently. And furniture. That, that ain't eating people. That's all to foring them. And even better... Uh, we've got a, 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 a real estate company that has created the most incredibly over-the-top, scammy, but effective business model in the world. You know, pe pe people buy the place, okay, they like it, they go in, they bought it for cheaper than it would normally go on other places, so you know, like, they're, they're gonna buy from this place more often, and then they're there for a little while. And then they get fucking alt f board from reality, and yeah. you just throw the building back up on the market. Yeah, actually, it gets even funnier. What? Uh, the MTF force that's on the case constantly, MTF Omega-3, also known as I Hate Pacifism. What? What's that code name? <laughs> I, what? The, <laughs> what? And hold on, but it gets even better, Hatchet. MTF Omega 3 was deployed to to the site to pacify the subjects via non lethal tranquilizer darts. <laughs> They're trying I, to I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. I, I, I think they have problems with pac pacifying people. <laughs> I, I, I don't get the joke at this point. I was getting, I was getting the joke because the MTF group is called I Hate Pacifism, and they're being sent to pacify. That's not what pacifism is. Is it? No. Pacifism no. means abstaining from violence. Oh. If they're going to pacify someone then they are necessarily engaging in some amount of violence based upon the context. This is just thematic to their name. Yeah. They just hate pacifism. You never... How, how do you not know the meaning of pacifism? Shut up. I don't... How... I can't just think of this. Bright tends to not know quite a few obvious things. Accept it and move on. Well, that doesn't... That doesn't... That doesn't help me. I'm baffled. Well, what's obvious to some people isn't to others. Just gotta accept faults and non-faults. I've known about the term pacifism since before I... I can even remember, but my mom was also a Buddhist. So that's one of the core, like, things you learn. The only thing is, is this, like, really fully dangerous? Because, like, if you get out before the 30 days, you're fine. Who the f- Bright? Yeah? If you just bought a house- mm -hmm. You're not le leaving in 30 you're not days leaving or less. In 30 days less. <laughs> what if you don't like the house? 
Generally speaking, when someone decides to leave a building like that, it's for a reason more than just, I don't like the house. It tends to come down to some other reasons. And most of the time, those reasons show up outside of the length of fucking month. Yeah. Yeah. So point being we've got a uh we've got a San Francisco based uh uh realty firm that has the best business model on the planet. Uh no one can compare. I'd say certain groups. <laughs> Cuz it's not all the time and it's just it's literally just the handful of people who purchase from this specific firm. <laughs> yeah, the, it's just that's we just like you know what? Fuck this firm. <laughs> no, the the SCP's like I'm going to help this firm have one of the best business models in the country. <laughs> if all we care about is profits rather than I don't know ethics, what's the point of ethics under capitalism? If all we care about is profits, then this is easily the best business model I've ever heard of. All right. Uh, you I sell. Said... Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you sell something to someone. They 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 enjoy it. They probably leave a good review about your service. They get fucking deleted from reality, and you immediately sell it again. Yeah. All right. I have now sent a picture of SCP sixteen ninety eight in stream planning. I feel conflicted. I feel very conflicted. Why? Because on one hand, she looks like she wants to eat me and not in the fun way. But on the other hand, she's attractive. God damn it, Hatchet. So what do I do? Alright. This SCP is SCP-1698, also known as You Can't Get There From Here. SCP-1698 is a phenomenon affecting three buildings, a 12-story hotel in Redacted USA, a two-story building house in Redacted France, and a five-story office building in Redacted Brazil. The phenomenon affects these buildings such that none of them can successfully be approached by land. Although they can be seen, all attempts to reach them by foot or land vehicle result in encountering obstacles such as intervening buildings, extensive road damage, and attendant construction, gridlock traffic, dead ends, and road closures, and thick and impassable vegetation. Of note that is that it is possible to navigate to locations immediately adjacent to these buildings, but invariably some independent, some impedient uh, will prevent anyone from actually approaching the affected buildings themselves. All three buildings can be successfully be approached by air and MTF agents introduced by helicopter have discovered that there is no dis discernible abnormalities inside the buildings themselves aside from the expected amount of neglect resulting from <laughs> long-term lack of human presence. They further report that it is possible to exit the buildings at the ground level, but as soon as they no longer have direct view of the ground floor of the building, it again becomes impossible to locate. Researchers installed on site uh, have not been able to detect any spatial anomalies or perceptual hazards, and O5 Command has tentatively Approve the usage of these sites for a long-term usage, a uh, long-term store, sorry, of infrequently accessed non-digital financial and adm administrative paperwork. SCP-1698 was discovered in August 2010 when the Intelligence Office identified multiple simultaneous online 
complaints from the customers, employees, and residents, residents of the affected buildings, all were reporting the effects of SCP-1698. The Foundation has confirmed these reports, and within five months, they had purchased all three buildings and surrounding locations via shell companies. That's the description. Wait, so then where does the where does the cute where where does where does the cute murder lady come in? Alright, well there is one addendum and only one. So okay. if this addendum doesn't have to do with the cute murder lady, I am going to be extremely pissed. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, addendum on April 17th, 2012, the areas affected by SCP-1698 expanded such that it is now no longer possible to locate or approach any location within 37 meters of the buildings originally affected. Additionally, two more affected uh, locations were subsequently identified since centered around a small municipal park in redacted Australia and an abandoned warehouse in redacted Spain. A third location which appeared on the state was found to be an instance of SCP-2449. The significance of its concurrent manifestation is unknown. During the expansion event, 131 non-Foundation individuals were in the new affected areas consisting of 37 pedestrians, 78 people inside buildings, and 16 individuals inside vehicles. All found themselves unable to ex exit the area they, went, they were in due to the inability to approach any area that would be considered separate. Instances that pedestrians could walk along sideways but could not enter buildings. Uh, hold on, I lost my place. Uh, I found separate. Not enter, enter buildings or step off the curb, and individuals inside buildings could not utilize exterior doors. Attempts to evacuate trapped individuals by helicopter uniformly result as a failure to the individuals to reach the ladders due to intervening events such as event. Oh wait, so hold on. intervening events such as such as sudden extreme inclement weather or the ladders becoming entangled in trees or power lines. SCB-1698 has been upgraded to containment class Keter, while until such time it can be determined how to predict, prevent, and prepare. Uh, wait, hold on. Determine how to predict, prevent, mitigate, or reverse SCP-1698's expansion events. There we go. That's the addendum. Where does the cute murder lady come from? I don't know. That is a good question. It's probably an OC. Uh, You've got an OC instead of... What? For it one, was not a proper picture! For one. Was, I looked at the number, picked it up, and it placed it in file. <laughs> okay. That's probably the only one that wasn't like that, because most of the pictures that I got were from the articles themselves. Did you, like, were were you not able to go to the article itself and pick up a picture? There's no picture for this article. Uh, Sorry, Hatchet, but there's no murder lady for you. Damn it. What picture are you going to use then? Because you can't use the OC. It has nothing to do with SCP. Well, it does have the number, so I'm just going to leave it there. Well, yeah, but 
There's well, another I, I thing can't... that has a picture that's that literally looks like the Russian version of 1698. I know, but well, I'll change it later. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, so, ba so based upon there not being the cute murder lady, uh, I, I would say that this is just certain groups, because while it's obviously a pain in the ass trying to deal with this shit, it's, as of right now, not going to cause any significant harm. Yeah, that's fair. It's literally just going to, like, so far... It's literally just occasionally showed up elsewhere and made a bunch of people confused as to why they can't exit a building they're in. Or exit an area they're in. Yeah. I'm sad. Uh. Or it's Words cannot properly describe my disappointment. So, uh, I, I had to put the next picture in spoiler. That's always... Clicky, clicky! Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that looks like a statue. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What am I looking at? That's a the statue SCP. of a person that looks like they... Have uh, gotten ready to fall. This is this is this is my new favorite image. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he looks like an incredibly depressed statue. It's like a statue version of just hang in there. Only instead of being an adorable kitten, it looks like a depressed old man that looks like he's definitely gonna fall. <laughs> he's so casual too. He's got his hand in his pocket. <laughs> He's just chilling there. <laughs> okay. I like this I like this new tradition of you showing us the photos. Yeah. Also, this isn't one of the keters, but three uh the one of the numbers before the keter one we're about to read, it its nickname is the human fetus composite. Ah! Okay. I mean, uh, ex no. uh, excuse me, it's pronounced composite. Shut up. I'd like to speak to your manager. I am the manager. No, you're not. You're the manager. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's the manager. No. I'd like to speak to Jerry. Wait, I'm going to use that whenever Karen no. talks to me. Like, I'll speak, take me to your manager, and I'll be like, you're the manager. <laughs> You're the manager. I quit. Get out of here. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, but anyway. The next nah, is... even no, even better. Like you're not even actually an employee there. You're just a guy you're just a person in line. And then the the Karen walks up. I'd like to speak to your manager. And then just completely irrelevant person next to the Karen goes, You're the manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just completely confused them. 